Hello and welcome to my third humble little video in a series regarding science and God. In this video, I provide more responses to very legitimate and profound statements and questions from atheists and agnostics who've commented on my videos. Uh, some people have made fun of the quality of my video productions and I admit they are quite basic. I make my videos here on my back patio because I think they're more interesting to watch with a, a nice background rather than the use of an interior wall in my house. I use my little laptop and simple props that are easy to see and understand. My videos are designed to inform non-believers, including people who might just be struggling with what to believe, but designed to form non-believers, inform non-believers about what Christianity uh, is and why they should consider it. These videos present examples of scientific facts contained in the Bible, facts that today's scientists agree with. Now then, we'll cover a number of comments and questions from people who've watched my videos. The topics are not in any particular order, and they are, here they go, eyesight and physical frailties, sound waves and outer space, Moses and the water world, light before our sun was created, the earth hangs on nothing, outer space is something, hair by the numbers, spreading equals expanding, quoting Stephen Hawking's book, time's relativity in a nutshell, free will and Jesus Christ. Okay, now some people have asked why God would create anyone whose eyesight is weak or becomes weak over time. Well, my response is that all life on this earth is mortal. Eyesight fails, bodies fail, and eventually we die. In this life, we are not created as immortal beings. Now, others have questioned the fact that there's no sound in outer space. I guess they never saw the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, which is factual regarding the lack of sound waves in space. However, uh, my point in my first video was that an atmosphere is needed for the development of sound waves and there would be no reason for any random mutations of DNA, which are accidents and chance, to begin detecting vibrations and then more accidents and chance to eventually produce the workings of an ear and a brain to interpret those vibrations. That takes unwarranted faith to believe that just happened by chance. Some atheists have stated that those who wrote the books of the Bible thousands of years ago couldn't have known much about, much of anything about scientific theory. And I agree, those writers could not have known the truth of those scientific facts they wrote down without divine inspiration given to them by Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible. For example, Moses was an isolated sheep herder who knew absolutely nothing about the geologic history of the earth, which occurred billions of years uh, before by time as we experience it here on the earth. Yet Moses wrote correctly in, in the book of Genesis that during the earth's development, there was a time when it was totally covered with water and then the dry land appeared in one place, which was the supercontinent that existed before tectonic plate movement began, of course. Scientists today agree that the earth was once covered with water, and they agree there was originally one landmass, just as the Bible says. Others have asked how, according to the Bible, there could be light before our sun was created. My response is that by earth time, the universe is about 14 billion years old, and the sun and the earth are both about four and a half billion years old. So I don't really understand their confusion on this point. And as we all know, there are lots of bright stars out there in a, on a dark night which provide light. Besides, Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible, wasn't stumbling around in the dark before he created the universe, including our sun. In fact, the Bible tells us that in the next life following the resurrection, there will be no need for light from the sun. Atheists have argued about the fact that the Bible says the earth is hanging on nothing. Yet they also state that it's not hanging on anything. So what's their problem? The fact that the earth is moving in space doesn't alter the fact that it's not hanging on anything, just as the Bible says. 
Here's a point that I and many non-believers can agree on. Outer space is something. Until the, the Michelson and Morley experiment in 1887, as I'm sure many of you are aware, scientists just couldn't believe that light could travel through space on nothing. Thus, they referred to the substance upon which light traveled as ether. That experiment proved them wrong, of course, which set the stage for Einstein to develop his theory of time's relativity. However, I still believe space is something for this reason. If space were nothing, there would be no room, or space, for anything uh, or for the movement of anything because there would be no dimensions. It would just be nothingness. What that something is, I haven't a clue. Now, some have doubted my claim in my first video that Jesus Christ was describing DNA when he said that the very hairs of our head are all numbered. They say DNA has nothing to do with numbers. To that I say, okay, if you prefer the hairs of your head to be lettered instead of numbered, Jesus probably won't mind. But are there enough separate letters in the alphabet to use for each hair on your head? Not on mine. A number of atheists have argued that the universe is not spreading out, as the Bible states. They say it's expanding. Well, to that I say expanding equals spreading, and spreading equals expanding. I think they are just stretching, pun intended, to, to find something to disagree with because they don't want to believe the Bible. I think they should keep an open mind. Some have taken issue with my quoting Stephen Hawking's book in my first video, but I stated in that video that if they have an issue with what Hawking wrote, don't complain to me about it. I suggest they contact the, the late Hawking's publisher. Still others seem not to have understood my point in my first video in discussing time's relativity. Uh, so here it is in a nutshell. To argue about the age of the universe or planet Earth is silly because time is relative to the speed of the traveler. Time as we experience it is determined by the Earth's rotation, the Earth's revolution around the sun, our solar system's travel as the Milky Way revolves and as the Milky Way travels outward through the universe. Time could be quite different for us if we were within some other galaxy or if we were able to travel uh, in a super duper spacecraft near the speed of light. The examples in my videos of scientific facts contained in the Bible, facts that today's scientists agree with, as I said, show that the Bible is the true word of the one and only Almighty God. But some say they don't care what's written in the Bible. They just won't believe in God. That's their choice, of course. God has given you free will to accept him or reject him. Now, to wrap up, I ask that you please take a look at the pin statement below my first video. It contains a special prayer for use by atheists or agnostics. Now, the real beauty of the prayer is that you don't have to believe in God initially to make use of that prayer. All that's required is that you sincerely want to know that God exists. If you pray that prayer with sincerity, God will reveal himself to you, most likely in a very unexpected way and time and place. That's the way it happened to me many years ago. And no, I haven't heard voices. Didn't, didn't hear a voice in heaven. But I would think you'd like to know one way or the other about God. So please give that prayer a try. Only you and Jesus Christ will know if you do that. I pray that you will choose Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible. He loves you more than any human being ever has or ever will. He went through a torturous death on the cross to pay for my sins, your sins, and anyone who asks him to come into their life as Lord and Savior. That's all there is to it. No striving, no worrying if you're good enough, uh, a good enough person. Jesus paid the total price so we can live wondrous, eternal lives following the resurrection at the end of the age. Okay, that's it for now. Take care.